Good morning, everybody. How's it going? Um, so today I am going to basically do an unhaul, as if you can't tell from the title of the video. Okay, so as you can see, books on the floor all the way down in the back. I have around 40 books to unhaul today, including the books I unhauled like last summer. I still haven't gotten rid of. They're still in my room. Um, if you guys haven't watched that, you guys are curious to see which kind of books um, I have already unhauled. I'll leave a link or somewhere in the screen and so yeah, show you guys all the books I'm unhauling today. Um, after this though, I do plan on taking you guys with me to Half Price Books to get rid of um, these hundred or so books. Hopefully I can succeed in carrying all these books with me to the car and back and forth. We'll see. Um, but yeah, first we'll do some lunch. This will be sort of like a vlogging type of unhaul or video. I don't know. Um, but yeah. Peter Kavinsky. Okay, well, hello, I'm back. So now that I've had some food in my stomach, let's talk about some of these books I'm getting rid of. Okay, so literally all the books I'm getting rid of, half of them are contemporary and some are like fantasy that I don't plan on reading ever again or books I don't plan on picking up. All of the books that I'm about to show you guys are YA. So if you're not into YA, you can literally skip this whole video, so. Or if you just don't like YA in general, you can see me getting rid of some of YA books that you might not have even heard of before. I might be getting rid of your fave, your favorite book in, in this pile, possibly. And honestly, I don't really give a shit. It's my opinion and what I want to do with it. And we all have our own different opinions. So you can respect that or click off the video, okay? So the first book I'm gonna get rid of is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. This is the Alcred edition. I honestly prefer the um, regular cover more than the Alcred edition and I already own that particular book, so. And so I'm gonna give this away. Next book is Darkest Minds by Alexandra Bracken. Didn't really like it, not gonna continue it. And yeah, Alexandra Bracken's books aren't for me in general. Um, this horror book called The Cuckoo Song by Frances Hardinge. I don't even know what this book is about. Heart of Iron by Ashley Poston, who is the author of Geekerella. I have Geekerella. Do plan on reading that someday. Just not this book. This is also the Alcrate Special Edition, I think. And it's also signed. And it has purple sprayed pages, which is really rare, I think, for a lot of books to have. So. Oh my god. <laughs> Holy shit. I can't believe I haven't even gotten rid of this, like, before, but I guess it's just because it's so, it's a book I did not like, like immensely disliked. Um, I, I don't know why, but I'm getting rid of this. It's The Merciless by Danielle Vega. I don't know if you guys can see that, but um, yeah, there you go. It's just so bad. It was just poorly written, okay? It's probably one of the worst books I've ever read in my entire life. I should probably make a video about this. Do I want to keep this now? No, I'm gonna get rid of it. Get rid of it! Okay, another book by Danielle Vega is Survive the Night. It was, it had an interesting premise, it's like a raid gone wrong underground, but um, ultimately failed. Wow, this book brings back memories. So this is Daughter of Deep Silence by Carrie Ryan. Also, this is one of the most intriguing covers I've ever seen. It has an Asian character, um, Asian person on here, yet the book, the main character in the book isn't Asian. Or I don't even remember if she was Asian, but nothing led or inclined me to believe that she was Asian. So, I mean, can you tell if the author is white, so. Um, so this book really disappointed me. It's about a book about revenge, about some girl um, who wants to take revenge on the people who wronged her and her family after the death of her father. And this was less about revenge and more about romance, which I really disliked. So, getting rid of this. The next book is The Queen's Rising by Rebecca Ross. Cool cover, but no intention of ever reading it or picking it up. Oh, Ever the Hunted by Aaron Summerhill. I remember reading this. Um, I thought it was pretty mediocre in general. I think if you're like new to the whole fantasy, why fantasy? I mean, who isn't these days? But if you are, this might be a good pickup. But honestly, it was just a really quick, easy, like forgettable fantasy for me. So cool cover though. Also very misleading. One of the more uh, probably polarizing ones, but And I Darken by Kirsten White. I read, I don't know, I think like 30, 50 pages in or something, and I did not like the writing style, could not connect with the characters. It's been sitting on my bookshelf for around two and a half years now, so I figured I'd just toss it. I meant, like, give it away, not toss it. Hocus Pocus and the all new sequel. Honestly, do I even really need to read this? Okay, so we are getting into some contemporary now. The Love Letters of Abelard and Lily by Laura Creedle. Um, this is a contemporary romance book, which I have no intention of ever picking up. 
Dumplin', Go Big or Go Home by Julie Murphy. Saw the Netflix show. I don't think I'll ever need to read the book or inclined to, but this is this was a special memory for me just because this is one of my first I'll Crate boxes that um, I bought for myself and opened on camera, and it was one of the more memorable um, experiences and memories that I have on this channel. So it was a long time ago, but um, it's just been sitting there, and better for it to be in someone's hands who wants to read it than mine. Okay, the next one is The Problem With Forever by Jennifer L. Armentrout. Jennifer L. Armentrout was one of my high school, like, go-to authors to reads. I really enjoyed her books back in the day, but now I don't even think I will anymore. Oh my god, I even have a bookmark in here. Chapter 22. I was, like, halfway through. I think this is, like, I don't know. I honestly forgot what this book is about. But, um, removing uh, my existence from it, basically. So, getting rid of this. Me Before You by Jojo Moyes. I remember reading this book and really, really enjoying it. And then, like, a couple years later, learning how, like problematic it was. I really enjoyed it, I think, back in the day when I didn't, like, I just, for what it was, the writing style, the plot, the characters, but it's just the sublimal message behind it, I guess, was really controversial, and yeah, just getting rid of it in general. Okay, we have some sci-fi in here, and it's the Lunar Chronicles. No intention of ever finishing it. I think I read up to, like, Cress, and then I just stopped afterwards and I don't even remember what happened in Cress or the other books. Scarlet was one of my faves of all four of them. I haven't read Winter so I don't even know how the story ends which <sighs> it's kind of annoying but at this point like I'm not gonna reread the books just to like find out what happens or I don't know I'm just not gonna do it and plus the last book is like 800 pages I don't know if I want to put myself through that so if these are your favorite books or book series well they're going away, so bye! Another sci-fi series that I own, and this is kind of nostalgic for me, but this is the Fifth Wave Trilogy by Rick Yancey. Um, another last book I haven't read. I think I picked up like The Last Star a really long time ago after reading the first two books, but I just never got around reading it, and I lost interest, so... That's no, there's no, there's literally no other explanation, and... So yeah, I mean, The Fifth Wave for me was one of my first like actual sci-fi reads and that was just so like interesting and just so nostalgic for me. I read it back in the day, I think pre-booktube or something maybe, and I was just like so impressed with everything about it. I was like, wow, this is incredible and amazing. And then I read the second book, which was like, took place within like a week or something. It was just so short. I thought it was like a short story and I was really disappointed. Still kind of liked it. And then I picked up the last one and I never ever like picked it up since. I don't even know what happens. And the movie was not that great either. So, well, good memories, but you're still going away. The next one is Your One and Only by Adrian Finley. Okay, so the next ones, um, I don't even have the whole series, but it's the Shatter Me series, uh, Shatter Me and Ignite Me by Tahira Mafi. I've read all the books. Like, I really enjoyed it, but I just don't find myself ever picking it back up again, or they're just not like my favorites enough to just keep on my shelf. It was just like sort of like the fifth wave like genre era. I read it, really enjoyed it, was really impressed for what it was and yeah that's pretty much it. I haven't even read the, the latest book in the series that came out. No interest. I did at first and then I was just like do I really see myself ever picking it up? Not fucking really. So um, I know a lot of you guys really like the series and like, I've always seen tweets about on Twitter. This isn't a single fucking day where I don't see a tweet about some Warnet or Warner or Juliet or Julie, whatever. Uh, what's her name again? Juliet? Yeah. Okay, the next two books, I think, are in, like, a series or duology. I have no idea. But it's these two books. Um, Nowhere But Here and Walk the Edge by Katie McGarry. I remember this distinctively just because I bought this, like, in the beginning of, like, my, my booktube days. I went to the bookstore... And I saw this book. I got this at the used bookstore. Uh, you can see the sticker for $8. But um, yeah, so this interested me back then. It's about this girl who falls in love with like this rough bad boy and like a motorcycle gang or whatever. At the same time, I don't think I'll ever see myself picking these up and finishing them. So most of these YA books in general, for me, I just don't really see myself reading a lot of YA contemporary anymore or any of these books just because I don't, I can't relate to them in a way. I do relate to some of them, but I want to read more books about people my age in their like mid 20s, early 20s. Oh my god, I'm so old. About like paying bills or buying houses. Some similar to what Ariel Bassett said, 
which really got me thinking and like I, I kind of related in a sense. If you haven't watched that video, you guys definitely should. Really informative. Um, Geek Girl by Holly Smi Smale? Smale. Literally, S-M-A-L-E. Smile? Smale. Mm, interesting. I have no fucking idea what this book is about. I don't even know. Oh, this isn't even, this isn't even my book. It's my cousin's. We went to the uh, recycled bookstore and I remember uh, her getting it now. So, and she just plays on my shelf, but um, I don't think she'll miss this and neither will I. Just wanted to give you guys a heads up. Most of these books that I've got are either from subscription boxes or books that I got from my used bookstore. I'm pretty sure like, like last year, the last couple of years, I cleaned out a good majority of their shelves regarding like, I think some of the more stellar picks, like especially Thriller. I went in like two days in a row or something, like two twice a week that week. And I literally cleared out literally almost every single Thriller on my wish list that time. It was incredible. I found so many good ones. But um, yeah, the next set of books is Stolen Songbird by Danielle Jensen. I remember uh, hearing a lot of buzz and hype for this book, but ultimately I was really disappointed at how it turned out and everything. I didn't really like the writing style. I think this is like the UK edition. I have no idea. But um, yeah, I just remember not really liking it. So this is going. New World Rising by Jennifer Wilson. No idea what this book is about. Cover's cool, but uh, no interest in sci-fi these days. This cover though, Untamed by S.C. E. Stevens. This isn't even the first book. This is like the third, second. I don't care. Um. The Prince's Gambit by C.S. Uh, Picat. I've heard so many like polarizing things about this whole series in general. This is even the first book. This is like the second fucking book. And yeah, I just realized that just now. It says book two of the Captive Prince. So I heard it's like super raunchy and smutty. It's just something I'm not really reaching out for, but I just lost interest in general, so. Okay, so the next book is the Hazelwood by Melissa Albert. This is the Alcrate exclusive edition with the green cover. I personally like the black cover. Gold against the black better than the gold against the green. It is still a really cool, pretty cover, but I already have a copy and I did not like this book. So why do I need two copies of a book I didn't like? So this is gone. Uh, this duology series, I don't even know. The Rule of Thoughts and The Eye of Minds by James Dashner. Dread Nation by Justina Ireland. Um, this is like a zombie book set in like the 1800s, I don't even know when this book takes place, but I'm not really into historical fiction or zombies for that matter at the moment, and I don't think I will for a very long time, so this would probably be better in the hands of someone who wants to read that kind of thing. So this is gone. Oh my god, nostalgia at its finest. The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. Getting rid of these books, back in the day I was like, um, when I was starting booktube, I, need, I was like, I need books that everyone's talking about, like popular books, books I somewhat enjoy, but everyone really likes and they're super popular, so I might as well have them on my bookshelf so that, you know, people can see like I'm in the now. Thinking on that like now, it's just really stupid, but I mean, these hold a lot of impact for a lot of the YA genre, especially for me in the beginning, just because it really resonated with like a lot of people and it just kind of started a whole new dystopian phase for a lot of um, like new people, including myself. Getting rid of these. Uh, the Sandcastle Empire by Kayla Olson. Okay, so we have some OGs here. Okay, first we have the stupid Divergent series by Veronica Roth. I uh, honestly, okay, the first book was okay. It was fine. Okay, I just it was it was okay. Oh my God, can we just? That actually hurt just a little bit. Uh, I'm actually really sorry I did that to you. Okay, the next uh, book series, a trilogy, actually, now it's not even a trilogy anymore. The fourth book is coming out, and it's uh, the Legend series by Marie Lu. Um, I think I read the first one. I thought it was pretty good. And then the second one, and then I never continued on with the third one. And the fourth book I heard is being written or coming out, and it's like four or five years, three years later. I don't even know when these book series came out. I just remembered reading it and loving it back in the day. Lost interest, again, dystopian isn't really my thing anymore, so. These are good books, just not for me anymore, so. Okay, so now we have some more contemporary books. The Lake Effect by Erin McCannon. The Truth About Alice by Jennifer Matthew. That was a really hard title to read. Every Last Word by Tamara Ireland Stone. Not After Everything by Michelle Levy. The Poet X by Elizabeth Acevedo. I heard a lot of great things about this book, but um, the plot itself just doesn't really interest me. And I'm not just gonna keep a book just because it has diversity in it. If the book 
has diversity, that's really great, great representation, especially as an own voice uh, um, author. Um, but I personally don't see myself picking it up just because I'm not interested in the book. And I see like, there's a huge spectrum with this. Honestly, it could be a discussion video on its own. Francine Simone actually talked about this in another, in a video of hers that I really found super inform informative. And I think you guys should all should watch it. Reading diverse books just because they're diverse and also reading diverse books also for inclusivity and this is just a whole discussion topic on that. I might do a video on that. But um yeah, I think it'll be better in the hands of someone who wants to read this book. Hopefully it'll be in the hands of someone better than myself. And yeah. Um Magonia by Maria Devana Headley. So I heard um a lot of great things about this book when it first came out. Also the cover is really pretty, but I don't see myself reading. I just I think I just lost interest. Back in the day, this is one of my really hyped anticipated books. Just Died out. We need stuff out. So, Everything Everything by Nicola Yoon. Um, again, it's just a book I heard so many good things about. Got it back in the day when it was so popular. I thought I should have it just because everyone was talking about it. Got it because of the hype, which was a no-no now for me. Um, but yeah, um, I think I just never really picked it up then and now just because I never was really interested in the story. But I only picked it up just because of how many people said it was so good and just amazing and everything. Hopefully this will be a book that um, find a better home than mine, so. Oh my god, literally one of the ugliest covers I own uh, in my whole book collection. Coffee House Angel by Suzanne Selfors. This... Can we just talk about the monstrosity that is the front cover? It's just not the people, okay? I'm not talking about the people in general. I'm just talking about the color palette. I'm just talking about everything in general. It's just so ugly. Ew, even the... <laughs> Naked. It's just hideous color. Brown and pink. Who would think brown and pink go together? They do not. It's just, it doesn't work. What? What is this? I literally cannot. Oh my god, that's so bad. Uh, um, okay, I'm not saying anything against, against the author. I'm just saying the cover design. Whoever designed this cover. I mean, I've obviously never heard of this book, so. Alright, but... Definitely, definitely getting rid of this book. Oh my god, how- I don't even know. I don't even remotely remember how I even got this book, but it's fine. It's fine. Okay, y'all, we are almost done. So this um, contemporary series, I think I got at Target a really long time ago. Did I mention I love you? And did I mention I need you? Literally the epitome of this whole haul. No, I don't. Thank you. Next. Ah, okay. Flame in the Mist by Renee Adier and Wrath in the Dawn, also by Renee Adier. Didn't read this one. Got it because, again, everyone was talking about it. It was so popular back in the day when it first came out. So much buzz. Again, this is fantasy. Okay, I I thought it sounded really interesting, but then again, I think it's just one of those books. I don't know why I didn't pick up, but I ended up losing interest over, over time. And then I picked up her recent book and found it to be so disappointing. Utterly disappointing, and it was just... It was not a good book for me in general. And it was like a retelling of Mulan or some aspect of Mulan in there. I just did not like the writing style whatsoever. I thought it was very juvenile for my taste. And also the main character is just was just so fucking annoying. But again, one of the books that have such a really nice cover, but um it just wasn't that great for me in general. I think a lot of people really liked it, it just wasn't for me. So I just gotta get rid of both of her books. Yeah, Renee Audier isn't for me. Reign of the Fallen by Sarah Glenn Marsh. This sounds really, really interesting, but do I see myself ever picking it up? Again, not really. Um, it's about this girl who has the power to raise the dead, some like necromancy power or something like that. Sounds really great, cover's really awesome. I don't think I'll ever see myself ever picking it up, so. Okay, so Before She Ignites by Jody Meadows. Um, this is another fantasy I completely forgot about. Again, fantasy is very subjective to me now. I'm more particular about what kind of fantasy books I read now. Um, there's just so, so much fantasy. It's just, I, I have a particular taste and just, and this just doesn't um, fit in that category for me. So, uh, this is another book that brings back so many memories. Um, Undertow by Michael Buckley. I remember reading this book and just being so shocked at how bad it was. From what I remember, this is about the merfolk who come onto land and try to like take control of the land. And the people on land are trying to fight back, but the girl falls in love with the merboy 
mer merman mermaid whatever it is it has a really i guess kind of interesting premise like back in the day when like mermaids and the supernatural stuff was really popular but i think it just died itself out so um again it has an interesting memory attached to it but i'm gonna get rid of this okay so last and not least fun fact so cindy was here the other day and um she literally, I think, when we were sitting down to film our collab, it was really funny because she was just like, um, why do you have a copy of After by Anna Todd? And I was like, oh my god, I even forgot this book existed in like my whole book collection, which which says a lot. I even have the receipt for it right here. I, I paid $3.50 on January 4th, 2016. So three years ago, I bought this book at a used bookstore thinking I would, I don't know, like it or maybe interested in reading. I think I did read a little bit of it. People have been like reacting to the trailers and everything and it's problematic stuff in here. Getting rid of this, um, probably the most problematic of all the books that I own. So other than that, that's pretty much it. Fucking finally, let's get these 40 plus books and the other 60 books into boxes and bags and we'll head over to the bookstore and just, I don't even know and see what happens, I guess. Okay. Okay, well, literally, as you guys can see here, six bags of books, um, all ready to be taken out into the car, loaded, and get rid of. Okay, so we are on our way to the Half Price Books store. Um, but before that, we're gonna make a quick stop. And if you know me really well, you'll probably know where I'm gonna go first. Boba, of course. Now that I have my fix, we can now head over to the bookstore, which will be like around a 20, 25 minute drive. I don't usually go to half price books just because it's out of my way, but I'm going today just to um, get rid of all the books in the back of my trunk. I literally broke my back carrying six fucking heavy bags of books into the trunk, but can't complain since it's kind of a huge thing off my shoulders. It kind of feels kind of good. So, I will see you guys there. Hi guys, so I made it to the bookstore. Kind of excited. Don't know what to expect. This is like my first buyback exchange. I don't know. I don't really know how it works, but I will take you guys in and hopefully update you on what I'm doing. There's a lot of people here. And at this point, I'm still not comfortable showing a camera around, which still annoying <laughs> so i'm gonna go inside and i will see you guys inside i'm so great at so um i cleared out my trunk basically with the exception of one more bag and they let me borrow a cart so i can take outside and put all the books on and um it doesn't fit so i'll have to make a second trip but just saying that's a lot of books So I thought I'd update you guys on what's happening. So currently just browsing through the bookstore, um, waiting for the staff to look over the amount of books I brought in. I want you to wait in the store while they're looking through it, which is understandable, but I don't mind. So it gives me a chance to see what they have. Anything I'm looking for, I'm mostly looking for um, adult thrillers that I couldn't find online. So see if they have any of those out. But for now, just waiting on that.
Okay, so I just got um, out of the bookstore after they called me and um, they reviewed all the books. They took it all and they were actually surprised at some of the books I had. So um, that cart, right? So everyone at the check stand was staring at how many books I just had. Um, at first, when, when I came out with the cart, um, everyone was like in the parking lot was like, wow, you have so many books and I was like yeah and then the guy was like yeah you have a lot of YA um and also the hardcovers um don't sell as fast as paperbacks and I was super surprised I was like really so for the amount of the price that you're selling out hardcovers wouldn't that you know be the incentive to buy a hardcover since it's cheaper almost as much as a paperback and he's like no paperbacks tend to sell faster and better just because I guess people like paperbacks better than hardcovers which is understandable um so anyway he was actually really friendly and nice. When I was checking on the Yelp reviews, people were like, don't waste your time here. Don't buy back, um, buy your books back or whatever. Don't sell it here. And they're just rude customer service. Everyone was really nice. Like He was like talking to me, laying things down. He's like, so we're going to offer you this much. And I was like, oh, listen, listen, fuck. I was like, can you repeat that again one more time? Because how much? Okay, so from my first unhaul video i think i unhauled around 60 to 70 books i can't remember and then today i unhauled around uh 35 to 40 books 40 books so overall like around let's say um 100 to 110 books okay around 100 books and let's just say 90 percent of those books are all hardcovers okay and like 10 percent are paperbacks i got i was expecting like you know 20 dollars, 30 dollars if i was lucky i got over i'm just gonna tell you guys the amount um no, better yet, I want to fucking show you guys the amount. Guess what? There's a Target next door. We're going to go and see if they have the Wicked King. I'm like rich and loaded now. I was just so surprised that, so for the amount of books, okay, let's just say 100, 100 books, okay? I got basically $140 back. I was like, what? And I was like so shocked. He, he thought like I was going to... I'm like I was against it or something because um, he was like well okay um, that's just you know because you have some really good current releases and then some like releases that are old that we already have to um, duplicate copies of and I was like no that is totally fine I was so shocked like I was not expecting to get that amount of money back so I was just like bro I had less than 140 books so basically I got like a dollar fifty per book um, for cash Back. Oh, anyways, since your boy is loaded, we are gonna go and not spend it all. We are gonna go to the Target next door and see if they have a couple of books I've been eyeing um, that have been released already in the following weeks. Honestly, this this uh, half price books was pretty good. Um, they had a lot of books, but they were either books I had or in paperback, and or they had the hardcover. But since it's half off, like for example, like uh, thirty dollars, which is a thriller mystery. They're around 27 but if you had tax and everything, they're around $30, and they're, like, sold for 15 to 16 books. Uh, 15 to 16 dollars per book. I checked on Amazon, and Amazon sells it for, like, a dollar two cheaper. Plus, I get free shipping, and it's new, so I'd rather do that instead. And plus, they have paperback versions. Sometimes I don't like reading paperback versions of certain books. It's because the font is so tiny, and I can't do that. That's pretty much it. I mean, it didn't take too long. I got here an hour and a half ago, so I didn't spend too long um, at the bookstore. So that's pretty much it. We are gonna go and hello. There's a really cute guy that just walked by. Oh, okay. I'm pregnant now. We are gonna go into Target, or I should probably just, you know, save my money and not spend anything at all. But you know, your boy is weak. That is disappointingly empty. Okay, well, we're back uh, from Target, and I got two books instead of one. So, The Wicked King and After the Fire by Will Hill. So this was a surprise buy because apparently it has like a 4.38 on Goodreads, which is super high of like 2,000 ratings. Um, so that's that's pretty good. And I've never heard of this book before. So that's good. Um, so it sounds really interesting. It's about a girl, um, I believe, and she's locked up in this house. 
and she's never allowed to leave or do anything and she only knows this like figure father figure his name is like father john who's like super strict and obsessed with keeping her inside until she escapes and things start to happen i don't know what i think she has an ability or powers i have no idea people i looked at a couple reviews they're like uh you won't expect um whatever it is going into this book and i'm really excited it sounds sounds good it's a ya um book of course this is self-explanatory so the wicked king by holly black i got this edition and um i instead of the barnes noble special edition which um it's fine because this will match my cruel prince edition um which is white as well really disappointed though because the it's really flat the arc itself of the wicked king has like um has like raised images or raised bubbles and also parts of the crown which is really cool but that's fine i guess the whole day today was pretty eventful i um gave away over 100 books I got a good deal of money back, and this bitch got two good books. And also, um, if you guys didn't know, Target price matches Amazon. A lot of people don't know that, so what you can do is just grab a book, see um, the price on Amazon, and if it's cheaper, they can price match that. Just take it to customer service. I did that. I think this was like 13 on Amazon. Even though it's 20% off, so it's like around $15 at uh, Target, it saves me $2. That's, that's something. And then this one was $14 on Target, but on Amazon, it was like $9. So it could save you some, some monies. You guys know about that. So definitely keep that in mind every time you shop at Target, especially for thrillers. Thrillers, even though they're like 30% off, fuck, there's someone coming. Um, they're 30% off, you can always price match on Amazon. Anyway, so um, I'll talk to you guys later. Talk to you guys soon. Um, see you guys with the new video. Goodbye. Oh. False alarm. Maybe it was just someone locked in your car. Oh fuck, never mind. He's there. He we made eye contact. We need to leave! We need to leave! We're leaving. Fuck, that was bye. Hi guys. Okay, so I just got home and I just wanted to do, let you guys know something. Bookshelf reorganization time. Obviously, I won't do it today, or maybe I will. Well the camera battery is dying anyway. Wanted to let you guys know that I have more space now. I mean it looks like, there isn't a lot of space, but trust me, you get rid of 100 books, there's going to be a ton of space left. So anyways, I'm super excited to shift things around, and my camera battery is dying, so definitely not today. But stay tuned for that. Let me know down in the comments below if I got rid of your fave. I would like to know, I am curious, of if any of the books that I unhauled today were books that you enjoyed. Um, I'm curious, because my previous unhaul, like...